ADHD Rewired, episode 401. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we mention on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter, you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups, and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. You can do all of this at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Hey there, ADHD Rewired listeners. Before we get into today's episode, Just a couple of things I want to share with you really quickly. Not only did we hit the 400 episode milestone last week, we also hit 4 million downloads. So again, thank you so much for being a part of this incredible journey. Also, while this is technically part two of last week's episode, you don't have to start with last week's episode. And it is the second Tuesday of the month. So typically we would be releasing last month's live Q&A. We decided to hold off on releasing that until next week. But if you are listening to this early enough on November 9th, we are doing our live Q&A today at 12.30 p.m. Central, which you can register at ADHDrewired.com slash events. In this episode, I asked members of our coaching community to help me brainstorm ideas for new things I might be able to do with this podcast So if you have any new ideas or things that I might be able to try over the next 400 episodes, please go to the show notes page for this episode at ADHDrewired.com slash 401. That's the number 401. All right, let's pick it back up where we left off from last week. I love Xavier's question for you in the chat. I don't know if you can bring it up at some point. Mm Mm-hmm. Xavier, you, you can ask me that, and I fucking hate this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's very topical. We're hitting 400, man. You gotta stop and celebrate. You gotta make some so, joy for yourself. All right, let, let, like hang that, on. Let, me, let me make a quick transition back. Uh, that makes me think an important question is why do you hate that question? Mm, yeah, I know. Okay, fuck all of you. Uh, I love you all. Uh, <laughs> Eric, I'm a hot seat. Uh, Anytime you try to tell a therapist that you don't want to talk about something, they're going to immediately talk about it. There's resistance here. I guess we're already back. Um, (laughs) Okay, so Xavier, you you asked me how how do I celebrate? It was funny because I got a text message over the weekend from... My ability to remember names is just so awful. Um, it's uh, from, from Sharon Weinberg, who I had on the podcast a while back, and she does leadership coaching. And I was doing some coaching with, with her. Uh, she was coaching me on some leadership stuff. And this was like right before my divorce. And then my divorce kicked. I was like, I need, I need a pause on the, on the coaching thing because like I, that's like higher up on Maslow's uh, list right now. And I'm just dealing with like survival. And she, I think was, this is around the time I was hitting 300. And she kept asking me this question about how you going to celebrate. And I was like, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create another episode. I really like had a really hard time with like answering that. Um, and I guess I still do have a hard time answering that. Um, you know, I think that, you know, for me, like being able to do work that is joyous in some ways is like I get to celebrate every day. It's. Um, being able to to take on new opportunities and and continue to learn. Some of that sounds like I don't know. The, I and this is me. I'm with you because the word celebrate implies like party and big emotions and movements to me. And I, I celebrate small. Maybe you just celebrate small. You know, I think that one of the the things for me, and this was just a couple hours ago at the end of our alumni session right, when. Like a bunch of people were congratulating me for for getting to episode four hundred. Um, I think it was like one of the first times like it hit me that I created this. Like, I've been doing this for over seven years, you know, and I've 
I've only missed it two weeks, and only one of those was an accident. And um, I'm getting really emotional right now. I think maybe it's just allowing myself to to feel what I've done. That's how I see celebration, what's happening right now. Honoring what you've done that's helped so many people, so many of us, just amazing. And the hard work of consistency is brilliant and really super commendable and celebratable. Thank you. Oh, I didn't know that was going to go there. Okay. Grab some and water. thank you again, Eric, for being the model for uh, a man who, who can be authentic and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you, Xavier. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So I've done 400. It's, it's actually been a few more than that because I've had some like bonus episodes, but we don't count those. And then, you know. So 400 episodes, and um, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll share something here that I, I know I had mentioned to um, a bunch of our alumni, but I don't think I mentioned this on the podcast because for a while, like it's something that I recognized earlier this year. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like you, you don't almost want to say it because you don't want it to be true. And probably as soon as I say this, you're going to be like, well, yeah. I've been starting to get bored of the format of the podcast, and so I'm looking for ways to change the, uh, the the color of paint to do something different with it. And so I would love to get some of your ideas about what what I might be able to do that. Because uh, I, I love podcasting. I love interviewing people. I love talking to people. I love creating these experiences where I know as I'm having these conversations, I'm imagining listeners being seen and understood and having those those goosebump moments and those knowing laughter moments and like, I love that, but I also need to do something that is going to bring some novelty because I, I want to keep going. Will? So one thing we do with planning is we try to look where we've been. So I'm curious if we could start there. Like, what was your original vision for the podcast and how has that changed over the last seven years? That's a fucking brilliant question. I love that, Will. Okay, so I love that because my original vision of the, of the podcast was not an interview show. Uh, it was me sharing tips because I was, you know, I always knew that I liked to teach and, and share. And I also always knew that I, writing is, is almost always a struggle for me. So like, I'm not going to blog. I'm not going to, I'm just going to put a microphone in front of me and just like share my ideas. And then I stumbled into that first interview um, by reading a, a list, uh, email from a listener. And that sort of turned into an accidental interview. And then like after that, I was like, oh yeah, like interviews is, is what I want to do. Um, what was the other part of the question? Oh, so then I, I, I did a, I, for, I don't know, a lot of the, the episodes, there's kind of a mix of experts and everyday people. And then I just, I really just almost preferred just talking to everyday people. And so that's been the majority of probably, I don't know, probably the last hundred or so episodes has been just, you know, everyday people with ADHD. We're having conversations about ADHD and about life. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where, where you've been. I think the obvious answer to a format change is an ADHD true crime mashup. Say more. I'm just thinking, you know, like true crime's big, ADHD's big. There's got to be some ADHD person out there, someone who's murdered somebody. You just have to find them. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that's an idea. <laughs> No, but really, when it when it comes to when it comes to changing your format, do you want to go away from interviewing? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Like, um, uh, one of the things that I want to be able to do. So I, I'm working right now, putting together a, a mastermind group, which is gonna be a little bit different than the masterminds that I've had on on the podcast previously. My vision for it is to have a small group of people to have them uh, each do a sort of a, a personal bio in the beginning. So they sort of tell a story of, of who they are. So listeners then become more invested in this person as, as a character, but they're a real person, right? And then doing a, a hot seat. So that's sort of the only sort of variation of the of an idea that I've already done, but just in a, produced and, and created in a little bit of a different way. Um, I have thought of like doing, like changing the frequency of how often I, put out shows and doing more like 
produced shows that have like different segments. So like to me, that seems really interesting. I know one of the things that over the next year or so, uh, that something that 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 I need to change, and over the next year or so, um, I'm I'm going to be making the changes. I just don't know how it's all going to look. Is I know as as uh, ADSG Rewired continues to grow and the things that we're doing are are growing, I really need to spend more time focusing as CEO versus the sort of lead coach, which means like I know that in the next year I'm going to be going from uh, leading two groups to one. So right now I'm working on how do I uh, do that because um, I, w- I also want to you know help mentor and, and coach coaches and focus on growing in Dell Study Hall and so other things that are really making the because I want this I want ADHD Rewired to be bigger than me because I, I don't and I've, I've never thought of it that it's about me it's about bringing the community together and and you know, how do we all sort of help each other how do we all support each other. Um, so I feel like in order to do stuff like that, or I'm doing sort of deeper dive stuff where I might be going even on locations of places and, and interviewing people in that way, um, you know, doing more produced stories. Like I, I would need more time to be able to do that. So that's, you know, it's sort of like a, a radio lab or this American life version of like ADHD rewired. Um, but I don't, I mean, they have a whole production teams like those, you know, those really well audio crafted and, and engineered uh stories i mean that's that's a real art form and it takes and, and i love the i love the conceptual ideas of it i love doing it but it it just takes a lot of time to put that stuff together gail my couple of ideas um i did a radio show for 11 years once a week what we used to it was um the show for and about the lesbian community, music, talk, and entertainment. Nice. It was music, talk, and culture until the culture went gone. So I would interview people sometimes. Um, definitely there was music. So ADHD-related music you find. Like you could have like these little music breaks. Um, I did current events, like topics for that community. But we could do like current event topics that are related to folks with ADHD and we had like a political minute where I would get someone that was more expert about politics, but it could be in anything like expert minute. We have someone little segment on that. So those are just a couple of ideas I was going to put out there based on kind of things I did. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, we will be right back. Support for this podcast comes from our coaching community. If you listened to last week's episode, you'll know we're celebrating 400 episodes of ADHD Rewired. Sure, talking about ADHD Rewired's coaching and accountability groups is one thing, but being able to celebrate and really hear the experiences in somewhat real time in the form of an episode is another. Here at ADHD Rewired, the mission of our coaching groups is to empower our members and create a safe and supportive environment that's shame-free so that you can learn effective ADHD-friendly ways to live a more productive and wholehearted life. Put simply, we believe in growth through community. And that mission doesn't stop at 10 weeks. We keep that momentum going with our alumni membership community, some of which you heard on last week's episode and are hearing again today. If some of the stories you heard on last week's episode have inspired you to want to join our award-winning 10-week intensive program for adults with ADHD created by adults with ADHD, we would love to have you join us because managing ADHD involves more than just skills. It really is about connection. It's about community. It's about being around people who just get it. Kick off the new year by joining our winter coaching season starting in January of 2022 by going to coachingrewired.com and add your name to our winter interest list. Once you get your name on our interest list, keep an eye out in your email for instructions on how you can join us for our next registration event, which is on Thursday, November 11th at 1130 a.m. Pacific, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Submissions to join our registration events are due on Wednesday, November 10th at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. So don't wait. 
Registration is by invitation only. So if you don't want to miss your chance to join us starting January 7th for our 27th season of coaching and accountability groups, then get started today by going to coachingrewired.com so you can join us for our next registration event on Thursday, November 11th. There are a few things we're asking you to do before you get your actual invitation, which includes watching a 30-minute pre-recorded video and sending us a 45-second video. We'll send you the actual directions of what you'll need to do when you add your name to that interest list at coachingrewired.com. If you're listening to this after November 11th, check the website to see when our next registration event will be. Come grow with us. The website again is coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. We can't wait to meet you. All right, uh, let's go next to, uh, go to Will. And that was a few hands up, so write down your thoughts so you don't forget them by the time we get to you. I, I, I managed to do that this time. Nice. So one thing that you've said you've enjoyed with my show is the series I do on things. So where <laughs> I like do like four episodes in a row about one particular topic. And that's kind of an idea that you could explore too, being like, oh, I'll talk to a lot of people that are doing sleep issues or that are students or, you know, have like a focused kind of thing. Because that one that cuts down on work a lot because you're focused on one type of thing. But also, uh, I remember when you've talked about when you do read books and stuff, you like to really do the deep dives into one particular topic. Mm -hmm. And that could be a cool thing to do with the show as well. Be like, we're going to go really deep into this one area of ADHD. Hmm. It's interesting because like, so I've been, I've been uh, working on putting together uh, a new presentation. So there's part of that process that I really love because it really requires that sort of deep work. And I just, I kind of just love that, that feeling of it. Um, it's also, I'm not, fast at that but I do really enjoy that process and I guess uh I have no idea where I was just going with that it's gone and then one <laughs> other thing if you really do want to switch up the format think about a co-host hmm. because also that could split up your work you don't have to do every show then even though it's something that helps you step into that CEO role some more interesting okay Ooh. That's what I'm going to chew on for a little bit. Kristen, thanks, Will. Um, so my original question was, how do you envision segments when you talked about it being segmented? And then as I kept thinking about it, more of a masterminding type question would be, if you watch any talk show type things, what are some of the ones you're drawn to the most and how they lay it out? And then thinking about how you might want to do your segments. Um, and I'm with Will but maybe not even cut, maybe start with reporter and having a piece of the segment or something. That's, that was an offering idea, but yeah, I wondered what are you drawn to? And so how would you see segments for you using that? So one of the, the and I've had this idea for a while and I, every time I had this idea, I'm like, oh, so this would, like I would need more time just in the, in the week to, to do this is to um, synthesize the latest research in a way that doesn't sound like a white paper. Because I, like, as someone who is so strongly, like, what I do is based in science, but I don't like to have it sound like science. I like it, like, I like it to be just conversation and sharing information that, like, is accessible for everyone. I, it's just one of my very, like, it's one of the things that really bothers me about the, the clinical research is that it is truly accessible to very few people. Because it's like, you, I mean, I have a, I have a master's degree and I'm reading these white papers and it's sometimes like, wait, what is, I have to like remember what certain like statistical models mean and different like, and, but it's, I think it's so important that we are sharing accurate up to the information in a way that we can throw in some F-bombs while we're talking about it. Cause it's, we, it's gotta be entertaining and educational, right? Was that edutainment? Brendan, it looks like you're percolating on something. No? Yeah, but it's not done percolating yet. Let it percolate. I like, I like my coffee really strong. Um, Pam? This is going the opposite direction. Instead of highly produced and professional, what if you just winged a couple of episodes and see what happens? Like Eric in a flotation tank presenting, <laughs> store, presenting some ADHD topic and let's just see where you go. And, and really just have, it's so ridiculous, but just really have fun with it. 
because I'm thinking about your car episode, which I'm really looking forward to hearing now, but talk about unrehearsed. Like, what does it sound like if you are just going with your own thoughts? Or like now we're, I'm interviewing someone at Costco while we eat Costco hot dogs. You know, like what happens when ADHD people get distracted because you're going to get distracted. And so you're putting yourself in situations that you're going to show are challenging. And then you're going to talk about this is exactly what happens. We go, I don't know. It's just wacky, but I just thought there could be some flyer episodes that are just like really out there and fun. Like you playing pickleball and just brainstorming while you're playing. Like what do your ideas sound like when a part of your brain is completely absorbed in something else? Anyway, listen. Okay, I take it back. No, I'm, I'm just, uh, there's a lot of really, it's making my brain kind of jump in a lot of different directions. Um, I, I like that. Thanks for that, Pam. Uh, Tina. I love all of those. And I was kind of, I pick a ball was one of the things that I was going to bring up as well. Um, somehow. Are you telling know, me that I should just that. like start a podcast <laughs> about pickleball? Yes, it's Maybe. crossed my mind more than once. It's possible. Um, and I love the idea of like watching how your brain, like how the ADHD brain, like just like unfiltered, like just, you know, how it works, how like, you know, um, one other thing I was going to say is you were talking about the mind masterminding, which I love the idea of that. Cause that was, that hit home huge during coaching. And I feel like that's something that I just like want to continue doing with everything because also verbal processing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's common with ADHD um, maybe is verbal processing. So, you know, just being able to talk through stuff, I think helps with, with like-minded people that can relate. And then to that, like 100 successes, I think is something that I was just listening to your podcast with, um, with Greg, um, but just the, the thoughts around 100 successes and, and kind of what how that differentiates a little bit, you know, for ADHD and, um, and then the dear ADHD, you know, just kind of bringing some of those parts of the coaching session into it might be like, what else have you wanted to do? Well, um, you know, uh, doing, uh, I think I did this once a while back where I did a whole show of people like sharing their dear ADHD. Uh, I've been wanting to do... I, one of the things I've, I've thought about doing is actually having one person for a number, maybe even like eight episodes uh, and actually just like coaching them. Um, I've debated back and forth on this idea, but the idea of doing more of like a therapy type of, um, like if you ever listened to um, uh, what's your, uh, Esther Perel, her, her podcast, um, what she does is like one, these one encounter type of uh, therapy sessions and it's, you know, I think they use pseudonyms and, and then I love how she'll like inner, she'll kind of like in post production sort of cut in and sort of talk about what's happening here and give some of the background. And so that's uh, like, so that would be something that would be of interest. Um, I love the idea of having live panel discussions. I, I was getting ready to, to start working on this before COVID and then COVID. It's like, well, that's that idea has got to be tabled. But to do actual live broadcasts, live shows, like, you know, find small theaters to rent out. Um, because to me, like, I, I love the energy of live. It's just like, it, I just get so uh, energized by it. Um, so other things, I, I, would, I would actually love to do stuff with musicians and, and artists and sort of like go with them in their process. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, those are some of the things that I've... Oh, I also would... Um, um, you know, those moments where you have like nine ideas all at the same time and they all cancel each other out. That just happens. It might come back. Can't get enough of our shows and stories about ADHD? Check out all of the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network by going to ADHDrewired.com slash podcast network, where you can also subscribe, listen to, and share all of our shows. This is the podcast network for people with ADHD by people with ADHD. And we want to thank you, all of our listeners, for tuning in and sharing all of our shows. 
but it doesn't stop there. If you're catching this early enough on the day it came out on Tuesday, November 9th, and you want to hang out with me, Brendan from ADHD Essentials, Will from Hacking Your ADHD, MJ from ADHD Diversify, ADHD Rewired Coach Moyer Maven from the ADHD Friendly Lifestyle, and ADHD Rewired Coach Roxy Martin from our upcoming podcast, which will be co-hosting with Will Curb. Wait, what was the question? And my assistant and ADHD Rewired's amazing community manager, Barb. You can join all of us today and every second Tuesday of the month for a live Q&A by going to ADHDrewired.com slash events. We do stream the live Q&A on Facebook as well, but the best way to interact with us and for us to get your questions is on Zoom. Our next live Q&A, as I said, is today, November 9th at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Come join us and ask us your ADHD-related questions. That's ADHDrewired.com slash events to register. We really do appreciate every single one of you for listening, sharing, and subscribing to all of our shows. We hope that our shows and our stories help you feel just a little more seen and heard and understood. And most of all, we hope that you know are not alone in your ADHD experiences. If we've done that for you, please consider doing something for us. Please leave us a rating and review because it helps our shows get in front of more earballs and it does fill up our little podcast buckets too. Find all of our podcasts and RSVP for our live Q&A that we do every second Tuesday of the month at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern at ADHDrewired.com. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from our patrons over at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. It's also where you can get ad-free episodes of the show when you become a patron at $5 a month. Or for $10 a month, get ad-free episodes and hear the audio from our monthly coaching sessions that our $25 a month patrons can join. And the ad-free episodes and the monthly bonus recording of an actual coaching call will appear right in your podcast app, which you just have to set up on our Patreon page. We want to thank Jonah E. and Carol H. this week for becoming patrons over at ADHDrewire.com slash Patreon. Thank you. And members at $25 a month can join me every fourth Tuesday of the month for a group coaching call on Zoom. Our next Patreon-only group coaching call is on Tuesday, November 23rd at 3 p.m. Central. That's Tuesday, November 23rd, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. If you want to join us but you aren't a patron yet, get signed up by going to ADHDrewire.com slash Patreon. No matter the contribution, I'm grateful for any contribution you're able to give. Your support helps me grow my team so we can reach out to even more adults with ADHD everywhere. And we're getting ready to bring on another administrative assistant so your support helps make that happen. You know what else your support can help with? I've literally been sitting in the same desk chair since college. This chair is literally over 20 years old. Your support can actually provide me with better support. So if you love being a part of the community and love the show, and if you're in a position where you could support us financially by becoming a patron, we'd really appreciate your support. I would really appreciate your support. Consider joining us over at ADHDrewire.com and become a patron. Remember, perks start at $5 a month with ad-free episodes, and support can start at any amount that works for you. That's ADHDrewire.com slash Patreon. And thank you so much. Brendan? Uh, why not do all of that? Why not do all of it? Yeah, and here's what I mean. I got on, I started doing my show and I was like, I want to interview parents and I want to interview experts and I want to interview teachers. And so I did. And then I interviewed random other people too. As long as you just label the episodes well, or even you could even steal like the, the season idea. You know how there's like, I, I do want to go seasons. to seasons. Yeah. Something like that, where it's like, cause I, I started thinking this way. Cause I was like, yeah, well, if you do some, like I call them on my show, I call them rough cuts. When I don't edit, I just like rough cut. I throw it out there. If you do some rough cuts, right, that will give you time, kind of, probably not enough, but at least to some degree, to do more sophisticated produced stuff. 
I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not the one that edits my stuff, so it doesn't, oh, that's, that's true, not, yeah. that's not the part that but it's, it's still going to require more interviewing and right. more background stuff. And if you mix up your presentation, that's a way to get over the tediousness that you're experiencing. Um, one other thought I've had, and this would actually be a completely different podcast, and I'm not sure how well this sort of fits into like, as far as like, would that be helpful for business? I would actually love to interview kids and have kids talking about their experiences living with ADHD and have it be for other kids. As a guy who's thought about this a lot, my biggest, because people keep asking me to do that. And my biggest question is like legality stuff. And like, you have consent. You get parents consent. Yeah. You, like one of the things that with, with uh, my show is that 99% of the guests on my show use their actual first and last name. And I freaking love that because I think it is a huge destigmatizing um because it's just like yeah like we're putting ourselves out there right um I think with kids I wouldn't I wouldn't even give them that option like it would they would, it would be a different name because you just don't know like because to me like I, I think about what's the greater purpose of what I'm trying to do as as a business you know as um you know it's the the mission that that I um you know, for the businesses, we, we foster growth through community, right? And it's so it's that idea of if kids can feel understood by hearing other kids. Um, like, holy shit, I think, I think actually one of my favorite interviews is when I had my son on. I was just blown away. We've tried that many of times and it was like, oh, no, I can't release that. Um, and just like him sharing his level of self-awareness was just like, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be so helpful for people, and for kids. So that's one of the things I would I would love to do. I like I love helping people tell their stories. That to me is one of my favorite things that I get to do. And it's like one of one of the things I would love 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 to do and I've been, I've been bouncing this idea around for years. I probably need an event planner to actually pull it off, but to have a, a actual live like in person event that was just like the the moth where people tell really good, like really good, crafted, coached stories, right? Where they've practiced it, they rehearse it, the delivery is just amazing, right? And have it be an ADHD uh, version of it. And I would love to do that to, alongside a, like the, one of the chat conferences when, they, when we are finally doing them back in person um, as sort of a approved evening event. Because I, I just think that'd be so, so cool. Um, yeah, it's yeah, there's a lot of ideas. I love those kind too, where it's like maybe it's during a political year or something, they're wanting to get kids' perspectives and they have a group of kids mm -hmm. and they, they pose questions and then you know go around. So it's it's not just this one individual. Those are always neat too. Yeah, I, I would also like to do um stuff where I maybe interview different psychiatrists and talk about um and like, and I, I also love the idea of, of experiential journalism. You know, I did that, that episode where I uh, had the, the, the neuropsych testing, like it was a two part uh, episode. And then we shared the results on, on the podcast. Like I thought that was, I think that was great. Um, so maybe even more stuff like that. So people like understand what it's supposed to be like and what it can be like. Jenny, is that a hand? Are you, are you going to contribute? I oh am. my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, and basically what, what Brendan said, I love the idea of, of just, yeah, don't worry about going from previous format to a new format. You can have more than one format, do it all. Like Brendan said, and, and mix it up. And isn't that what's best and most interesting for our beautiful brains anyway. And I especially love the segments idea. Cause to me, that just seems like that would afford you so much flexibility and take a lot, a lot of pressure off, I think. I mean, maybe it could also be tricky, but if you had different, like shorter components in the can, and then, you know, if something comes up during a week or whatever, don't, you don't need to freak out that, you know, if whatever the law, whatever plan went awry, you've got some stuff in the can to just like, all right, here's just a few shorter things this week. You've got a podcast. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know if that would make more work, but, or if that could actually help to like, you know, it would alternate. definitely be a change of workflow, um, but I think it's, it was, you know, it was, so it might initially probably be more work, but that doesn't right. mean it's that it would be that way for the long run. Yeah, I, I just could see where that could be, add a lot of flex, like you could alternate between the deep dive and like what we've done with just a long podcast and just like a high quality, like in 
in depth kind of stuff versus just short bits on stuff. Because I know the shorter stuff does well. Like, yes. I think it's one of the reasons that that hacking your ADHD does so well is that yes. it's like under twenty minutes, right? It's like, and I mean, I've gotten so many emails from people who are like, "This is an ADHD podcast. Do you really understand ADHD? Your episodes are so long." So I'm like, I get it. Like, and here are some links to some short, some shorter content, right? Like, I love long form content. Like, I like I love to go deep. So it's it's not for everyone, but I would like to have stuff that maybe is shorter. Let's see, uh, Xavier. Um, great ideas. Love them all. Um, and I was going to throw out the Dear ADHD, but it sounds like that's already floating in your beautiful brain. So I'm going to throw out this different one. How about a uh, daily reflection? I'm throwing that in because that's like my current, the one thing. I call that my TOT. Every single day this week, I'm going to notice this is really hard. And then um, I jump into um, a few questions that I ask myself. What is the thing that's hard? Um, rearranging my space is really hard. Uh, the hardest part is taking it all down, naming why it was there in the first place, and then trying to rebuild it from scratch. And then the next question is my favorite part, or maybe the best part, or maybe the easiest part of this task is my favorite part is creating beautiful things where it has form and function, gets me excited to actually use it. The last question in this daily reflection is if I had a list that would help me get started, stay focused, and clean up, where would that list live? And I did it for the first time. I, I wrote it on the Mighty Network, posted it, and um, I'm going to do it again today. Yeah, so that's a daily reflection inspired by the thing that you inspired me to do, throwing back at you. Awesome. Well, from what you just shared, the thing that really, uh, when you said creating beautiful things, like I felt that viscerally, I was like, that's what I want to be doing is creating beautiful things, things that move people. It's like, I don't want to just create content and information. I want to move people. I want, I want, I want people to, to laugh, to cry, to wonder, to have those moments where you literally stop in your tracks and completely change the way you think about things. That's, that's what I want to, to create. And I want to do it in a beautiful way. Tina, thanks, Xavier. Yeah, I love what you just said. I, um, you know, I love that you were talking about the kids for this. I was diagnosed when I was younger and I didn't understand it. And things have been different since then. And, and there's more out there now. But I love that what you've created is a community that normalizes ADHD. And like, you know, it is what it is. And, um, and what you're talking about, you know, the beauty and, and telling stories and things like that. There's such beauty in the in what people with ADHD do, you know, it's different that talking about that or bringing kids into the conversation to help normalize it for them is really cool, really important, really powerful. Um, you know, just kind of normalizing that. I just think that is so powerful what you've done with normalizing it and bringing that, you know, into all avenues. It is beautiful. I mean, I think the ADHD brain and the strengths and the uniqueness is, I, I think it could be looked at as like a strength. Thanks, Tina. Pam. A couple of ideas. Uh, a show about the strength of ADHD and famous people or successful people who have it, what they're able to achieve, what they find that they're able to achieve by their divergent mind. What is different about you that makes you successful? And that has to be a component of the ADHD, I think. Also, um, I don't know if this was, if you ever done this, but I don't know anything about ADHD coaches. And I'm curious to know who their typical clients are, what they work on the most. Typically, they're people with ADHD. Yeah. Sorry. And no, exactly. But what, you know, if they're successful, what, what are they dealing with the most? And then can they have, a, can we have a live example of a therapy appointment um, or a, a consultation real time? And you could do it with different ADHD coaches. And are there ADHD coaches specialized in different things? I don't know. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a world that I'm not really familiar with that I'd be curious about. Thanks for those ideas. And I, I definitely, I always like the idea of getting to um, 
bring people to an experience that they wouldn't normally have access to. That's why I, I think it's just amazing. A lot of the conversations that I'm able to have uh, on the podcast and when we did, we've done the mastermind sessions on the podcast. Um, like I, I love that. That is to me, it's like super fun. And I, um, I think it's helpful. I think it's, I think it's real. Um, I, cause I thought about stuff like almost like a Mythbusters kind of thing about ADHD, but it's, I, I think that the people that listen to this podcast already are sort of in that realm of like they, they're seeking the information. So the people they need to maybe hear more of that, they're not listening to this kind of podcast. I mean, that's my assumption. I could be completely wrong about that. Um, yeah, I, there's so many ideas and you know, it's, um, I just want to keep helping people and helping people feel understood and uh, not alone because, you know, bringing it back to kind of where we started, that's, that is um, that feeling of not being understood and feeling alone is to me one of the, the worst feelings that there is. Eric, you just said something that prompted a question in my head that goes back to masterminding you. Are you thinking about the audience you're wanting to attract? Are you wanting to expand that audience as part of reasons or at least thoughts around how you want to possibly change or modify your format? Um, yeah, I mean, which is why the, the the idea of, I almost feel like the idea of interviewing kids would be almost be more of like a legacy project, which would be way later. But I still like love the idea. Um, like I personally love like working with entrepreneurs and as I continue to, to grow and, and scale the business and bring in other coaches, um, I would love to do a, like CEOs and, and entrepreneurs based coaching group. That's like a really like, kind of high performance, high, um, high drive. Cause that's just like, I just, I love the, the, the crazy adventure of entrepreneurship cause it's just fun. And it's, it's, um, cause like where else can you like make shit up as you go and like if it doesn't work you're actually it's actually okay if like you have that growth mindset and you learn from it and you keep building and grow like do that shit in most most other arenas and you get fired right and so i okay, so i just i love working with entrepreneurs you know i think there'll be it'd be great to do something with with college students because i think that the things that college students experience is very a lot of ways very unique to college students. I also think it's also an amazing opportunity for growth because there's so many data points and opportunities for working on planning, studying, study strategies, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I also want to get into doing retreats, wellness workshops, and and I really want Pickleball to spread to the community. So when we have our first retreat, we can do it in a place that has Pickleball because I, I just think it's the most fun thing ever. Jenny? Is it okay to um, go back to, I was just going to share what I love about the community. Is do that, we ever do things linearly on this podcast? <laughs> go for it. Uh, for me, what, what I love about the community is that it's a, a place where I'm welcome and accepted just for being me. Uh, I'm enough. It's even though I have these struggles, instead of me being the different person, I'm one of this group of people who is very similar, if not the same struggles and that that has been life-changing for me and has really helped me work through shame and just have, have it's just such a different experience being with a group of people not feeling like I have to hide like you know tell the little white lies or cover up you know or just, just share my struggles like I, we could be real we could be real with each other because everyone here gets it sometimes we are struck we our struggles are just silly little things but they're really hard for us and and like no shame or embarrassment I could share things like I'm having trouble getting my laundry done. And everyone else is like, oh yeah, I totally understand. And that's, that is just life-changing. It just feels, it's a, such a relief. And it's being with people who understand is, is an amazing experience. Thank you, Jenny. And I think that's actually a really good place for us to end. So I just want to thank so all of you for, for being here and, and doing this uh, with me and being a part of uh, the community. And I especially want to thank all of you listeners who have, uh, you know, who are journeying with us. I feel very, very grateful and, and uh, that I get to, to have these conversations and that they're meaningful and that they're helping, you know, because there, there still is so much misinformation out there about ADHD. And um, so the more we have these conversations and share them and bring community together, because, you know, there's plenty of people out there who are just in the 
ADHD isn't real camp and you just got to try harder and quit using excuses. Um, and just to all, for people who have those people in, in your lives, I just want to remind you, it's not your job to be the asshole whisperer, right? Come together here in community and we understand you. We accept you. We want to support you. you know, so whether it's part of one of our coaching programs or our adult study hall or a free, a free uh, Facebook community, or even uh, supporting us on Patreon. So just thank you. I, I still kind of can't believe that we're at episode 400 and I uh, really look forward to seeing what's next. I mean, it's kind of fun because like, who the hell knows what's next? You know, I'm sure I'm going to do some experimenting. Hopefully some of it works and I'm sure some of it won't. And that's also okay. It's all part of the process. I just am so just overjoyed and humbled and gratified and thank you. We'll catch all of you back next week. Thanks for listening. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find timestamped summaries and additional resources for each episode. Apply to join our free and secret Facebook community. Learn more about our award-winning intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. Join the Adult Study Hall virtual co-working membership community. Find all the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't hear anywhere else. And use the search tool to find episodes on specific topics. You can do all of this at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click on the Patreon button. If you are a regular listener, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to you, the listener, but it's not free to produce. Plus, patrons get cool perks like ad-free episodes and access to recordings of coaching calls and $25 a month patrons can join me once a month for a group coaching call. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tivers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tivers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see selective interviews and other videos I've made. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, your therapists, your coaches, doctors, siblings, parents. And if you, your coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at the website, ADHDrewired.com. If you are a member of Chad, Ada, or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this show and all the shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really loved this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I do count on you to help spread this message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other app that supports reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Here is my list of must-listen-to audiobooks updated July 2021. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, attached by Amir Levin and Rachel Heller. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer. The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Rest by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. I always recommend to my coaches and admin that they read that book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, a required reading for all of our coaching group members. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Baden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. 
And if you're looking for something a little bit more magical, I have fallen in love with the Harry Potter series and the narrator, Jim Dale, is amazing. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus, all of her stuff is great. Starting with Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or leader, be sure to check out her book, Dare to Lead. Do you have something that you would like to share? Click on the podcast tab at ADHD Rewired. Click the button to be a guest at the top of the page and schedule a 15-minute interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, growing, and connecting. Self-care is not selfish. No matter what you get done or don't get done, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. And we don't need to do them in the hardest way possible. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.